On October 8, 2010, Maurice Patterson, a client of the Center on Wrongful Convictions, walked out of the Cook County Jail. He had spent eight years in prison for a murder he did not commit. The most troubling aspect of this case is that the evidence that ultimately exonerated Maurice was known to the prosecution for a year before he was tried. The case against Maurice Patterson began early on an April morning in Chicago when two men fought on a Chicago street over crack cocaine and drugs. One of the men took out a knife and stabbed the victim to death. He stabbed him 13 times and ran off through an alley. The witnesses didn't tell the police that they knew the man who had, who had done the stabbing, but they could tell the police which way he ran. And when the police followed that path, they found a bloody knife, which they sent off for DNA testing. For reasons unknown to me still to this day, Maurice Patterson's name arose as a suspect, and based on identification testimony, uh, he was charged with this crime. As the case went forward, after, after he was charged, the DNA results came back, and they showed that it was indeed the murder weapon. The victim's blood was on the blade and the handle, and there was also DNA from another person who was not Maurice Patterson. It was someone from the convicted offender database who lived right in the neighborhood. Dispositive DNA evidence that this other man and not Maurice Patterson had been the one to hold the knife and stab the victim to death. And yet, that information was never turned over to Maurice Patterson's attorneys before his trial. Not only was it not turned over, but the DNA results were completely misrepresented by the prosecutors. After the testing was done, the judge asked the prosecutors in court at a pretrial hearing date, what did the DNA show? And the prosecutor said, well, there was someone else's DNA on the knife, but not the victim's DNA. And so we don't think it's the murder weapon. And that was an absolute falsehood. Maurice Patterson was sentenced to 30 years in prison for this murder he didn't commit. And he would probably still be there today had he not himself written to the Illinois State Police Crime Lab with a Freedom of Information Act request and and asked for all of the lab reports in the case. And when he got them, and when it was all sorted out with the help of his appellate attorney at the time, it was revealed to his team for the very first time that critical, dispositive DNA information had been withheld from his defense attorney. Now, as soon as this was discovered, he was granted a new trial, um, but Amazingly, the case didn't end at that point like you think it would have. The state's attorney, uh, for one thing, the exact same state's attorneys were put on the case for a second time. Uh, they were never asked to explain their false statements to the judge. For 11 months, they insisted they were going to retry Maurice Patterson for this crime. And it was only about a week before the trial was scheduled to begin with no prior notice to us or to Maurice that the prosecutors came in without one word of explanation, um, said we're dismissing the charges. And the striking thing about this case is that back when Maurice Patterson was sentenced to 30 years for, for this crime, he told the judge that he was innocent. And he also said, I'm gonna be back. It might be a year, it might be five years, but I will be back, and when I come back, who's going to apologize to me? And to date, no one has apologized to Maurice Patterson, and no one has explained why he spent eight years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Maurice Patterson's case is an egregious example of prosecutorial recklessness, but it is hardly unique. The Center on Wrongful Convictions has been involved in 37 exonerations. Throughout those, there has been a pattern of prosecutorial overreaching, hiding of evidence, fabricating evidence, and nobody, not once, has been held accountable for misconduct. If we're going to have a real impact on wrongful convictions, we've simply got to find a way 
to hold prosecutors accountable, to remind them on a daily basis that their job is to do justice, not to win convictions.